It's Tuesday, July 23rd, 2013, 7 o'clock p.m. You guys ready? We're ready. Okay. Stock Village Board Meeting Agenda, Tuesday, July 23rd, 2013. Can we all please stand for the pledge? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Village clerk, please call the roll. Burgess. Here. Morden. Here. Myers. Here. Paskin. Here. Washington. Here. Williams. Here. I'm going to turn it over to the attorney. Um, Mayor Hanks uh, is not here tonight, so... Uh, then we may want to make a motion to uh, nominate someone. Would you like to use plank, plank please? Uh, uh, mayor Hanks is not here tonight, so if anyone would like to make a motion to nominate someone, Mayor Cotep. I make a motion to nominate Rosie, Trustee Rosie Williams as Mayor Cotep. Second. Village clerk, please call the roll. Burgess. Yes. Morden. Yes. Myers. Yes. Paskin. Yes. Washington. Yes. Williams. Yes. And just so it be known, the mayor is on his way. Okay. Item number two, public comment. All questions need to be directed to myself. And as I did last week, I will open it up to any trustee who would like to field any question. Just let me know so we can make sure we can get as many answers, questions, as many answers for our questions as possible. No public comment? Oh. Yes. Just agenda items only. Nope. Okay. Item number three. Um, 3A, Mayor's Report. I will save that for when Dave gets here, so I ask if we can put that towards the bottom of the agenda. Um, item number 3B, Village Clerk. Thank you, Madam Mayor Pro Tem. I would like to reserve my report to a later time in the agenda. Thank you very much. Okay, um, would you like to do 3B1? No, I'll do them both at the same time, okay. thank you. Moving right along. Um, <laughs> item number 3C, Mr. Griegel. Um, I'm looking to that, Madam Mayor. Hey, um, item number 3D, Village Attorney. Uh, no report tonight unless there's any questions. Okay. Anybody? Questions? No? Okay. Um, item number 3E, our village engineer, Mr. Zarnick. Sorry to break the trash. <laughs> uh, first of all, regarding the water treatment plant improvement project, that's, uh, we received a construction permit for that project, and according to the terms of the consent order, we are required to bid that in 30 days. So that will be advertised to bid on August 3rd. And we will have a bid opening for that project on October 8th. So we are moving along finally. It's good news. And then secondly, the MRT CDBG resurfacing project is complete. We've got a little bit of curb remaining and then restoration when the water clock breaks uh, later down the line will pull off. And that concludes my report. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Madam Mayor. Go ahead. You said that uh, the opening will be uh, October what? Thank you. Okay. Okay. Moving on to reports of trustees and board committees. Uh, item number A: Parks and Recs Committee. Trustee Paskin and Morton. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I just have to report that the community center will be changing the schedule as of tomorrow because of extra help that we have got through the state of Illinois. The community center will now be open Monday through Friday from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. And there will be at least three or four people over there to help people play games, get basketball courts open, keep uh, volleyball nets out, whatever it is needed. So that we have a lot of help over there for right now. So just send the people out. We have no people who want to come out to the community center to enjoy themselves. They're more than welcome. There is no charge. Uh, we've also been looking for some volunteers to help us set up for the corn and dog roast in September. So our committee is looking for people with ideas for that and people who know what went on in the past so we can have that get up and running for September. The free lunch program has now served over 400 children. It will run until August 2nd, when it will end on August 2nd. So that runs from noon to 1.30, Monday through Friday, every day of the week. 
that ends my report, ma'am. Okay, thank you very much. Okay. Um, item number four B, Ordinance Review Committee, Trustee Myers. Just one brief thing. Uh, the Ordinance Review Committee will be changing their date on like Wednesday to a Thursday. Uh, it will probably be the second and the fourth. Uh, we'll make positively that announcement uh, next meeting. Uh, I have to check with my committee members, make sure that's not coincide to everybody. Uh, and that's all I have, ma'am. Seven o'clock. Okay. Yes. Did you, I'm sorry, I didn't hear. Is there actually a, d a date? Uh, the, it would be the looking at the, uh, the third, fourth Thursday of this month so far. Okay. Is that it? Item number 4D, Neighborhood Watch Committee, Trustee Washington. Thank you, ma'am. Yeah. First of all, I just want to say that we are still um, negotiating the price of building the signs for the village. We are very excited about being able to post signs. I know it's still in the formative stage around the village about the Neighborhood Watch. As you know, this is our, our official logo that we're going for the Neighborhood Watch program. And if anybody's interested in volunteering to be on the neighborhood watch, neighborhood watch, we'll be having our next meeting on the first Thursday of August, which is August the 1st, at the fire station. Also want to remind everyone to remind your neighbors to please turn on their front and their back porch lights every night. And that concludes my report. Thank you. Thank you. And I do apologize. I skipped item number C and our Governmental Relations Committee, Trustee Bird. Thank you, Pat. Mayor Pro Tem. Um, as I said before, and I spoke about it earlier, that I would try to work at this particular time that everyone know what my short-term goals and long-term goals would be in the government relations committee. Um, some of the short-term goals that we plan on trying to bring into the village is an apprenticeship program for the trades. I want to go out, reaching out to all the different trades and try to see if we can get a career night here and have all the trades represented and let the people know that the ones that are interested in joining the trades would it take to get into that particular field. Also, um, CEDA program, CEDA is not just bill paying, you have other things too. We're gonna to bring those services, we're gonna bring that information to the village, let them know how to properly uh, apply for that. CDBG grant funding, I, a lot of times you hear about CDBG grant, basically when you hear it come from Jeff Brown, it's, it's to do with the village because the village applies for it. A lot of people don't know that homeowners also qualify for CDBG grant funding for their homes. And, uh, but there are different ways to do that, and we're gonna bring that to the people. And one of my long-term goals, healthcare screening. What I wanna do is try to have, at least twice a year, have a vehicle come from one of the colleges and one of the uh, uh, teaching institutions medical institution to come out here and get free screens and maybe shots if they'll do that. And I'm going to have to work with the um, other types of bodies, maybe we can make that happen out here in South Village in this area. Because I don't, you know, we, we need, it has, it does happen in other areas, but we need to be So those are some of the things that I plan on doing with the intergovernmental relations. And that concludes my report. Oh, I'm sorry. We won't meet this Thursday. We will meet the following Thursday at 7 o'clock right here. Thank you. And um, item number E, Public Relations Committee, Community Outreach Partnership, that would be myself. Just a reminder, um, I know that I've asked before and I haven't gotten any feedback, but if anybody up here or any department head or committee chair needs a reminder of the website or the soft talk policies, please let me know. Um, we are right around the corner from the end of the July, of the month of July. The SOC talk is still not out for the month of July because we are not, we don't have enough articles. We don't want to, it's very labor intensive and it's very paper intensive to put a SOC talk together and distribute it and we are having a shortfall of articles. So I just want to encourage and remind everybody to please make sure that we are connecting with our residents, that we are informing our residents. Uh, we have a couple new brand new committees. We've got some very active people in those committees. And a lot of people are saying that they don't have a way to know what's going on in Sock Village. And one of the ways we do that is through the Sock Talk. And if we don't have enough information to put in the Sock Talk, we can't put one out. So I would just encourage that we have the board members, the committee chairs, the department heads, please provide Sock Talk materials so we can put that out. 
Anybody who has any question, again, there is a policy, there is a procedure to follow. If you are not aware of it, let me know and I can provide that to you. As far as the website goes, again, there is a policy and procedure for that. All items must go through myself as the chair or the village clerk who is the contact with our IT person. Oh, only us two. Nothing should be submitted to the IT person directly. If it's going on the Sauk Village website, it needs to go through us. We've talked about it before, how one person has to be in charge because there was a confusion, there was something got put on and <coughs> incorrectly or in the wrong spot, and to avoid that, we need to have one go-to person. So again, that's in the policy and procedure. Anybody who has a question, please let me know. And that's for the, um, oh, I'm sorry, one more thing for the Public Relations Committee. As a reminder, we were working with um, the Employee Appreciation Committee, and we do have the Battle of the Badges softball game. It's the 3rd of August. At this time, we have one team sign up. So we do want to continue with this. It is something we want to do, so we're encouraging department heads to please ask around, see if we can get another team. We don't have enough participation. We're not going to be able to do it. So please um, speak with your staff. If departments need to join together to make a full team, just um, let us know because it's something we really think is going to be a good idea. We think it's going to be fun. But just please contact me if, if that would be possible. And as far as community outreach partnerships, um, we did have a meeting today. We are working with the village clerk towards the national night out, which I know she will give a report on later. And I just want to remind everybody that we are, we do meet every, right before at six o'clock, this, the second and the fourth meeting of the month. Right before the board meetings, the Community Outreach Partnership Committee does meet. And I just want to remind everybody that we're having those meetings. And um, one of the things that we're doing is working with National Night Out, but there's plenty of things that we are working on. And that concludes my report. I do have a question because uh, Salt Talk Deadline, I know you said the plan to live and make that one for next month. We're making one for July. We are, I'm saying that <coughs> this is, I'm encouraging everybody to do that. We would like to have some articles if we can have some articles by Friday. If there's anything that's going on, if there's anything that anybody, a chair, a committee chair would like to put in the sock talk, please submit it by Friday. We would like to get one out in July because we don't want to miss our deadline. Or, well, not, not miss our deadline. We don't want to go through the process of changing it. Down the way, email that to you like in the past? Mm -hmm. Okay. Trust me, And I just wanted to say uh, that in regard to information being given to you or even to the clerk, maybe you want to let uh, the tech or the village know that too. Because I speak on my behalf, I did submit my bio up to the web page. I was told that the deadline had passed and had lapsed. And his instructions were as long as he has permission from someone on the committee for the web page, which he did receive uh, some information to put it up from someone on the committee. So maybe he needs to know too. It needs to come directly to you. That is good address. Okay. Anybody else? Okay. Um, item number five, reports of departments, committees, and commissions. Number A, um, fire department, police department, 911 commission. Chief Thank you, Mayor. I would have asked two weeks the fire department to respond to 23 calls. They responded to one structure fire, one stove fire, two dumpster fires, two electrical fires, one gas fire, three fire accidents, nine firearms, one CO, one with wire down, two ambulances. Fire Department would like to thank everyone who attended our fundraiser at Hometown Hero. We have really appreciated the support. The fire Department Association will be hosting a back to school drive. We will be giving away at least 50 book bags filled with essential school supplies that our children need. We also will be giving away free haircuts to the young men of our community. This will be based on a first come, first served basis. And it's all in the South Valley President's College. Um, okay. The mayor is actually going to be here in a few minutes, so I would ask the board if we could take a five minute recess so he can come in and he can get settled and I can go back to my chair. <laughs> recess is called at can seven. I make a motion? Okay. Can I have a motion to make a recess, five minute recess? So moved. Second. Okay. Village Court, call the roll. Burgess? Yes. Morton? 
Yes. Myers? Yes. Pasta? Yes. Washington? Yes. Williams? Yes. And now we are in recess. This is 7.17 p.m. Everything you need. Your report and my report was, was held until you got here. Okay, so when you sit down, you can go right into your report. If you don't, you can just say no report at this time. Village clerk, your report, and then stop writing is where we left off. So you'll go right after stop writing. There's your report and there's everything that you have. Wait, you can. I've been going for the last 25 hours. The meeting's almost over. <laughs> We're through 5D. Okay. All right. So all right. So when you sit down. Mayor's report, no report, village clerk's report, and then go to F to stop right here. I can sleep on the plane. We got a little nap here and there. How many hours were you at? On the plane, it was 14 hours. But oh, jeez. I left the hotel at 8 o'clock in the morning. We got up at 6. I'm just glad you're here. All right. These people are evil. You got that on camera, right? Oh, yeah. You look good in that seat. Took your seat. I'd rather take your seat. You make the big bucks. <laughs> Can we trade? Yeah, I'll talk to Bert. <laughs> What's, he's my buddy, right? Yeah. <laughs> Yes, thank you. Is there something you can put in? You want to put the soft top too or no? Sure. Whatever we can. I might shrink it. Yeah, well, that's fine. Because depending on when we start getting articles, we might have to shrink things. Can you tell her to send this to me? Okay, I'll tell you about it. So, or she, if she can make it a half a page it, herself, because mm -hmm. she might want to move these icons around, yeah, okay. tell her to see if she can shrink it and email it to me. Uh, I'll tell her. So, we're trying. You're doing a great job. I can. Tell her that I said that both of you are doing a great job. But they're all home. I've already no, equated I'm him. Five He's going to go back and do his report and mine and oh, then. Good. That'll work too. No. There was no public comment. Your report now? His and then mine. Hey. Send me that letter. <laughs> Talking about, oh no, I'm gonna, oh, that one? No, it'll be on the internet tonight. I'd be happy to put it up for you at the meeting. Are you gonna see, you're gonna, actually, there's a video. For everybody, not tonight. It'll be on the website. Gerald's working on it. A video of me in Washington and Rosa. Whenever you're ready, sir. There. Motion to reconvene. So we're going back to the mayor's report, right? Need a motion to reconvene? So moved. Second. Yeah, motion second. Let's please call roll. Burgess. Here. Morton. Yes. Pasta. 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 Yes
Yes. Myers. Yes. Paskin. Yes. Washington. Yes. Williams. Yes. Reconvene at 722. All right. Uh, first of all, I'd like to go back to item uh, 3A, Mayor's Report. First of all, I'd like to apologize for being late. We had a late flight and traffic was terrible on the way here, so I tried my best to be back uh, for the meeting, so I do apologize. And at this point, I don't have a, a uh, report tonight, so we'll go to item 3B and uh, Bill Clerk. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Welcome back. Thank you. First of all, I have a proclamation that I'd like to address. Mm -hmm. Whereas the National Association of Town Watch, NATW, Target, Nextdoor.com, and Associa are sponsoring a unique nation, nationwide crime, drug, and violence prevention program on August 6, 2013, entitled National Night Out. And whereas the 30th annual National Night Out provides a unique opportunity for the village of Sauk Village to join forces with thousands of communities across the country in promoting cooperative police community crime prevention efforts and whereas the village of Sauk Village plays a vital role in assisting the Sauk Village Police Department through joint crime, drug, and violence prevention efforts in the village of Sauk Village and is supporting the National Night Out 2013 locally and whereas it is essential that all citizens of the village of Sauk Village be aware of the importance of crime prevention programs and impact their participation can have the impact that their participation can have on reducing crime, <coughs> drugs, and violence in the village of Sauk Village and whereas police community partnerships, neighborhood safety awareness, and cooperation are important themes of the National Night Out program. Now, therefore, we, the Mayor and Board of Trustees, do hereby call upon all citizens of the Village of Sauk Village to join in supporting the National Association of Town Watch and the 30th Annual National Night Out on August 6, 2013. Further, let it be resolved that we, the Mayor and Board of Trustees, do hereby proclaim Tuesday, August 6, 2013, as National Night Out in the Village of Sauk Village, dated this 23rd of July, 2013. I would ask that the Mayor and the Trustees sign this proclamation, proclamation at a later date. And to continue with my report. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. There will be no meeting next Tuesday. It is the fifth Tuesday of the month. There will also be no meeting on Tuesday, August 6, 2013, due to National Night Out. Flyers from National Night Out are available on the back table. National Night Out will take place from 4 p.m. to 9 p.m. Lots of fun and games, including Dunk the Cop. Meet Safety Pup and our new canine officer, Falco. There will be presentations on senior safety, parental drug awareness, tour the SWAT van, and more. Pass the word, bring your grills, or stop by a local restaurant and pick up snacks. Refreshments may be available for purchase on that day. On July 9th, I reported that I was taking a trip to Washington, D.C. to participate in the Building One America Summit for inclusive suburbs and sustainable regions. I also announced that I was taking this trip at my own expense and my own pleasure. Prior to finalizing my plans, I spoke several times to the President and Executive Director of Building One America to get clarity on what would take place at the summit. It was my intention to join in roundtable discussions with a bipartisan group of elected officials, members of Congress, and policymakers from varied areas of the United States. Mayor Hanks and I agreed that the trip would be a great opportunity, and he wished me well. Days before I left for D.C., I received an email from the Executive Director asking me to prepare a five-minute presentation on the issues Sauk Village is facing with our water. In preparing for my presentation, I asked Public Works Director Kevin Weller for clarification on certain items and asked for his thoughts on what needed to be included in the presentation. I then submitted the presentation to Mayor Hanks, Village Engineer Jim Zarnick, and Village Attorney McGrath to proofread and change where necessary. The summit was phenomenal, and I have no regrets. regrets. Discussions included the state of America's suburbs, suburban poverty, and regional opportunity, the growing power of the suburbs and organizing to build inclusive and sustainable communities. Breakout sessions included discussions on water infrastructure, education, housing, and transportation for all Americans. A federal panel included members from the White House, U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development, U.S. EPA Agency of Office of Sustainable Communities, Open Society Foundation, and the Federal Highway Administration. 
I have always been and will continue to be an individual that seeks out opportunities such as these to increase my understanding and seek solutions from people that I may not meet outside of the I-80-394 boundaries. I plan on continuing my relationship with Building One America. I never made any promises to anyone. There was no need to. This was not a trip that was funded through the village of Sauk Village. I have not claimed a single cent as an expense. This is my business and no one else's. My report would not have taken this direction if it had not been for the mere fact that a certain group of residents, non-residents, board member or members, and commission, commission members felt that I had acted inappropriately and illegally by removing mail from the box of the housing commissioner and used it for my personal gain. That is slanderous and libelous against my character, and I resent everyone who perpetuated that horrible falsehood. I would expect that the people who claim that a letter was delivered to the housing commissioner bring proof that the letter ever existed. I would expect that the same people can provide proof that this was a housing summit and that the housing commissioner would have received an email to attend. Whereas, I do have proof that I received an email from the executive director of Building One America personally inviting me to the summit. Building One America sent the exact same email to several suburban elected officials, including Sauk Village officials. I just chose to think outside the box and respond to it. In closing, I do not apologize for any of the actions I've stated above. I refuse to acknowledge the ridiculous statements made on Facebook by simple-minded people who claim they have the village's best interests at heart, when in fact, they are the main reason the negative politicking has not stopped in Sauk Village. You have to wonder if any business or individual looking for a place to live would ever consider Sauk Village as a place to hang their hat with all of this negativity swirling around. I have asked my friends not to respond to Facebook either. I chose to fight my battles and defend myself in front of the people that elected me by an overwhelming majority based on my work ethic and my character. Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. And your business for that asking that reason that question is what? Uh, it's a personal trip. I refuse to respond. Uh, it was a personal trip. I refuse to respond. So you understand, the village vendors are our vendors. They're here for the village. If they help sponsor a trip, we need to know as an elected official that they help sponsor a trip. I don't care what she can call it, it can be in personal, but the village vendors who we as a village pay help sponsor this trip. We need to know that. It seems because like some people have already have that outside. information because I've been accused. Uh, I thought you were done. No. I beg your pardon. I will respond when you're done. The reason why I'm asking this question is not in contrary. It's, it's what, what we sign every March. It's called an ethics statement. And in an ethics statement, it says that you have to declare things like this. That's all I'm saying. That was my first question. <coughs> my second question was, when you got this communication, how come you communicated with the rest of the board? Me, myself, never knew anything until you made the statement at the village meeting that you were going, didn't know anything about the summit, anything like that. I would have thought that you would ask any of the other trustees or any of the other elected officials but they, but they like to go, don't ask two days before you leave and say, oh, you can come if you want to. That was my second statement. But I still reserve the right to ask if that trip, if any village vendor that does business with the village helps sponsor that trip, I'm asking you now. If not, I'll foyer it. Or I'll ask the vendors. Because that, that, that is ethics policy. It is. You can look it up. Thank you. Can I respond, Ms. Washington, before you ask a question? Because I realize that I am on the attack. First of all, I'm first of all, I have, it has been stated that I have gotten several, I have shaken down vendors and I have gotten so much money from so many vendors. Let, me, let it be known. I've asked an attorney if I have to, if I have to supply any information regarding my personal endeavor to, the, to the, uh, Washington. I was told I do not. 
And until the village attorney tells me that I have to submit any documentation, I refuse. This was a personal trip at my expense for my endeavor. I just said, Trustee, Trustee Burgess. No, I did not. Every day, a elected official. I'm, I'm, I'm answering your question, Trustee Burgess, and I'm not going to argue with you. I was asked to represent Chalk Village. My original intention was as an individual who was trying to enrich my knowledge. Okay, I've been a resident for 26 years and I've sat here and watched this board try to fix a situation that obviously cannot be fixed within the boundaries of I-80 and 394. Somebody has to think outside the box. I took out an opportunity from a personal invite that I received by email. This was a personal trip. It did not become a representation of Sauk Village until I was asked to do so. But, Trustee Burgess, now that you mention it, 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, every elected official on this dais represents the village of Sauk Village. That's what you elected us to do. I don't care if I'm at Fairway in Sauk Village or if I'm at Great America. When I am in the public, I represent the village of Sauk Village. I do it proudly. And I will continue to do it proudly. My personal business is just that. My personal business. Until the village attorney tells me I have to provide any information, I will not. And in the answer to your second question, Mr. Burgess, you know why? Because the minute, the minute I made mention of it, I was on the attack. I was Facebook out there. I don't feel that I, I let's just say, do we get along? Do we practice? You know, last Tuesday when we got together, I said, this is wonderful. All the committees are working together. We're having a great time. I really see this is a wonderful thing. Then I go out to dinner. I have two trustees telling me that there was a meeting after the meeting, five trustees discussing my trip to Washington and how they wanted to put it on an agenda to discuss me. That was inappropriate. Could have been a violation of the Open Meetings Act. But you know what? You only want to talk about me. Think about what you do. That's not true. And then the attorney is here right now. We can, we, we can dissolve this right now. I asked a question, Mr. Attorney. Did a vendor that does business with this village help sponsor a trip? That, 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 and that's all that is. She is a, 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 a official of the village. She went down there as a official of the village. I'm just asking, do I have the right to ask if a person that does business with this village helps sponsor a trip that she took? I mean, I I'd have to look at it more. I don't know if, uh, you know, she's saying she won, you know, as a personal decision. And it, but she, but she, but she, the um, communication she said stated that they invited her. She went down, she even stated she went down there and represented Salt Village. So therefore you went down and she still stated she's 24 seven like we all are. It's a matter of ethics. It's not personal. I don't know why you say the person's ethics. Like you just got to say about five trustees, which that was not true. It was not five trustees talking about you. To me, you're not that important to talk about like that. Ooh. You're not. not I don't know. I've been awful that. important. Not, not just that way you don't. Not that way. We not even talk about that. I'm just asking, I'm asking, asking the attorney, did, are we supposed to have an information? If anyone is doing this, what's the government contributes to one of the officials doing something. Because <clears throat> I know we cannot accept more than $100 at any given time from outside. And at least that's what I signed when I signed it at the state. Trustee, I think that the attorney has answered at this point and does not know the answer. So we'll do this. So we'll can I get them. an answer? We'll look for them to provide an answer. Um, and then probably an explanation on the uh, ethics. Um, because we know that we all sign the ethics uh, report every year. So. Um, Again, we know that ethics talks about taking money from a vendor from a certain amount for personal use, uh, but we do have to take a look at since uh, this trip was to Washington and Sauk Village was represented, it does the ethics report uh, also include uh, money that's being used for a trip for representing the village of Sauk Village. Well, so yeah, we look at that from that, the attorneys. That, that, yeah, you're right there. That is exactly what you just got to say. She took the trip in cahoots in accordance with the village to solve those. If cool. that's the case, then the vendor, whoever they were, should we should know who they were to help sponsor that. Okay. Even if it was taken, first it was personal, use my own money, then I got sponsored, then it was vendors. Now I don't know what it is, now I don't want to answer. I'm just saying, you know, let's do what's right. That's all I'm asking. Let's do what's right, and that is right to disclose who it was. That's all. Simple as that. All the personal stuff and attacking back and forth. I'm not even talking about Facebook. 
I'm tired of Facebook. I don't even get on Facebook. I, I agree. But, I, I mean, don't need we're not talking about Facebook. I'm talking about something that has to do with this village. And if, 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 if vendors are sponsoring things, <laughs> fine. I myself, like I said, did not get the opportunity to go. What I've done, I don't know. Depends on how quick or how early I got that opportunity. But I still, and I'm sure the people want to know, especially now with things and where they are as far as our financial situation. But I still would like to know if it was funded. And, and, um, trust, and trustee, I think we'll get your answer for you. I think we spent enough time on this topic um, because we don't have an answer from the attorneys. So wait for the answer from the attorneys. So, Trustee Washington. Yeah. Thank you, Mayor. I just want to say in regard to five trustees in the back discussing uh, the village park, I asked at a meeting that we went to if it was against the law of the Open Meeting Act for trustees to talk more than three at a time. And I was told that the Mayor, you was at that meeting along with uh, Trustee Hoskins and Trustee Morden, as well as um, Gary Hogan, and they told us it is not against the law for three or more trustees to talk as long as they're not discussing what they're going to vote on and as long as they're not talking about money. Or as long as they're not talking about village business. Uh, I, I was there at that same training session. Uh, it, the question was, can trustees, three or more, sit around and talk about family matters and, and, mm -hmm. and, and things going on? Yes, it doesn't mean that trustees can't talk to each other. Um, what that means in the Open Meetings Act is that you cannot be talking about any village business um, if you get together with three or more and you start talking about your business, you are in violation of the public media. Okay. So uh, it's the same as we've talked about trustees do not respond to all. Um, the best thing to do is not to be emailing each other uh, and not responding to all. Uh, that, that way there is no violation. And that was one of the things that if you were listening inside the same training we talked about, they said remove respond all from all of our emails mm -hmm. so that it never happens. Um, so again, as an elected official, I know you're a new elected official and you're trying to get all the information in, uh, there's a lot of things to learn and um, just things we have to be careful about what we do, how we perform business. Uh, we want to make sure that we're open, transparent. Business is talked about with, um, um, in open. Um, there's nothing wrong with a trustee going and talking to another trustee uh, about something. As long as you're one-on-one, -on -one, you can do something like that. But when you get three or more trustees uh, talking about something that deals with village business, uh, village matters, it is a violation of the Open Meeting Act. Okay, well, so with all due respect, the clerk said that she wasn't on village business. That was her own personal business, but that is her personal business. But I do want to say that it was said that um, the clerk was going to represent South Village in the whole South suburbs. That's what I heard here. I don't know if the minutes reflect that or not. And I just want to say for the record, personally, I don't care where anybody goes and what anybody does. I'm not here for that. But I do want to have an open and a transparent form of government that we told people that we wanted to have for them. And when questions are asked to me, I don't want to be uh, lumped in a group of people that's talking about somebody. I feel that this was not the arena to discuss all of this. But that's not my call. This is the perfect reader. Well, I feel, I feel that it is because that's just her own personal um, rebuttal on what somebody said about her on Facebook or what she heard somebody said in the back room or back about her. I hear a lot of stuff said about me on Facebook and here and other places too, but I don't bring it here to get clarity for it or to, or to defend it. So that's my opinion, like everybody else here has an opinion. That's just my own personal opinion that I want to know it. Thank you. Well, well, first of all, I think as elected officials, we all become in the light, limelight. Uh, there's going to be people out there that talk negative no matter what we do, whether it be positive or negative. Um, and we shouldn't even respond. We shouldn't even be looking at it. I know on Facebook I don't, I don't look at it. Um, but at the same time, um, I encourage everyone on this board to go to events and represent the village of South Village. Uh, it's, it's no different than an elected official going to a Southboro Mayor's and Managers meeting or to a dinner, or going out and meeting with Cook County uh, at an event that Cook County's having. There's nothing different. When an elected official goes to events like that, they are representing the Village of South Village. When the trustees go and talk to our state representatives, when, they, when they're out there in parades, uh, walking with state representatives and they're a trustee in this village, they're representing the Village of South Village. Um, 
And I encourage our board not to be narrow-minded, but to be broad-minded. Mm -hmm. To take the blinders off, to get out there, meet with our state representatives, get out there and get in these meetings, and get to talk to the OGNO. We've talked about this in the past. And I encourage trustees to attend these meetings so that Salt Village is represented not only at the federal level, but at the county level and at the state level and even at our local, um, surrounding local levels. It's important for the Village of Salt Village to be out there. So I mean, if there's events that you want to go to, I encourage you to go to them. I, and I'm sure that there's other things that you've gone to as a trustee from the village of Sauk Village um, and represented yourself at other events. Mm -hmm. I don't think that, that, that that's in question. I agree with everything that you just said, but if I go someplace in the name of the neighborhood of watch, and if I get vendors that give money to this village to sponsor me to go there, I don't want to get anything back. Mm -hmm. Yes, just mm -hmm. um, I just want to... Um, encourage all of the board members to make sure that you mentioned emails make sure that your email on the website is connected to your personal email um, because that's where my email for building one america was in my softvillage.org email address yes that was not connected to my personal account so because i watched i wanted to know where the email was and that's what it was it went to that so if your email does not go to your personal account I would suggest let me know so I can let Gerald know so we can fix it. Because if you guys look on your business cards, most, I'm assuming most of them are like mine, my soft village email address is on my account. So as I was passing out business cards this weekend, I had to notice that and realize that that needs to be changed because if I'm trying to make connections and do things like that with the wrong email address, then that's not going to work. So I would encourage everybody, if you have access to, if you remember how for some of the older trustees, if you remember how to access it, look at it. If it's not, if you don't remember it, if you is it, it's not connected to your personal email address, and that goes for our department heads too, because our department heads have um, addresses on the website, definitely let me know. And there are also things that come to info at softvillage.org. I get those to my email account. I forward those on. If it's something that's related, just sent one to Kevin today, I think. If it's something that's related to the police department, if it's something that's related to the fire department or public <coughs> works or whatever, I get those at info, I forward them on. But I had to make sure my personal email was connected with Sock Village. I would encourage you to check that. And if you know for a fact it's not, please email me so then I can forward that to Gerald. Um, I, I also received the invite for okay. Bill in America, but I was unable to attend. So. No, the reason why I'm saying my salt is always being connected to my little little account. I mean, I've been trusted for seven years. That had happened, you got to be reminded four or five years ago when we first started the website and started the, uh, the email accounts. So, yes, it does go to that. As far as networking with the politicians, I, I've probably done more than, than most of the people on the board because I do talk to all of them. But, and I do walk and I do attend a lot of things. I don't ask for anybody to do I've taken the clerk. I've taken other trustees with me when I went to places. I didn't ask for any reimbursement. I didn't ask anybody to sponsor anything. We went, we, we, we talked to people, we networked, we brought information back to the village. I've always done that. I'm just being open and honest. I'm not asking for anything. I'm not asking you for, for uh, you give me things to do. I just ask a simple question, something that I think as a trustee I should go to ask you, especially if someone is doing business. But to make the statement that we're trying to, you know, alienate or we're trying to stop progress, that's not true. I've always been out. To be. Most of the y'all, like the officials in the south suburbs, know who we are. Before this is before this year, I've been to different affairs. I went to different um, outings that they had. I have people in the audience to go with me. So it's not about if we don't network. We do network. It is not about networking. We've always tried to do that. I've always tried to bring something back here from the politicians, from the legislators in, uh, in, uh, in Springfield. You know, but I just asked, I just asked a simple question. And I didn't know it was going to break all this because it's really not worth all that. But I will uh, check again because I did not get that particular email as far as going on that particular trip. That would have been something that we could have went down with prepared and have someone, you know,
to represent that, that can talk, that has done this, that's in that field, you know, then have them come along or whatever. That's the only thing I'm saying. Because if it is water infrastructure, I mean, who better to, 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 uh, to do that would be someone like Kevin Weller, you know, something like that. Just ask a few questions is one thing, but to actually know what's going on. You yourself, David, as an engineer, like I am an engineer, we do know a lot of things about a lot of other things that, as far as infrastructure, some of those things have been taken care of. That's all I'm saying. All right. Move to item 5B, public works permit. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, just a couple quick items. Uh, we have had some uh, recent uh, complaints on hot holes, so we can have two crews out at uh, the end of this week and early next week. I uh, hope we take care of a whole bunch of them. Um, there are going to be a little bit of a relief here for the grass bank. Uh, we're finishing the biggest highs they are. The grass is going slower, so we will have another crew out um, starting to remove the ash trees. Probably going to start a soft trail and then the east side of town, which is smaller trees, will be easier to cut down. Um, it will look kind of dramatic, especially on soft trail, because there are quite a few ash trees over there, but uh, they are affecting the branches that are flying off and, and they're affecting the track. So we're going to try to get on as quickly as possible. Um, we're currently on the south side shutoff list. The list is actually one of the smaller than it's been in the past. Uh, I just remind residents that if uh, an employee from public works, that was your property. The other side was intercepting water off, but please do not hassle them or threaten them. But they will call the police and they will address charges and do too much. Uh, we have an incident today, and I just ask the police to let them do their job. Um, we've also been getting some calls about branches around town. We did give two weeks in the last storm pick up for the branches. We usually give one week after any storm event, and all they have to do is call the village hall, leave a message. We'll get one week and then we'll start picking up. On average, we get about two weeks. Uh, we're, we're done with the storm pickup at this point. The next actual pickup is in September. Uh, when we do break the chipper out for the removal of the trees, we're not going to be picking up other piles. So, if residents are calling in the chippers out, that's for a specific event. Um, as the engineer said, uh, all the robotics seem to be uh, buttoning up. Um, everything looks pretty good. We're going through a few little minor punches things. I don't see any major problems, so everything's going well. And uh, over a uh, week ago, we had a rash of water main breaks. Um, the last couple summers in a row, we've had a lot of uh, youngsters uh, getting a little hot rather than going to a neighbor's house, they want to open up fire hydrants. Uh, we had three fire hydrants open. Of the three fire hydrants, we received seven water main breaks from that, which uh, this is a major, major deal to, especially out at uh, Air Creek, because they would have been isolated. One was on 223rd Street um, that was repaired first, but they were in very isolated. We couldn't have repaired that. So, if any residents, if you see anybody hammer the pipe, just throwing a piece of wood in front of it, a tire on top, putting wrenches on top, call the police. The resident, whoever it is, will be arrested. It's against the law of hammer the fire hydrant because it's the safety of this whole town. And, and that concludes my report. Thank you, Mr. Miller. Kevin, I do have a couple of things. If a person puts their tree limbs out in the um, and they've been out there for a while because you couldn't get you couldn't get to them because you know you, you're busy. Should that person be taken? As long as uh, if there's an event, a storm event, or there was an all pickup, we would always give time to an all pickup, and it doesn't have to happen two weeks after the normal time frame for things that happen, emergencies, etc. Any storm event, you have to call the coach hall and let them know that you put them out for the week after the event. Or nobody's been in the area or the area, then we won't come back. But if there's other piles out from the storm event, that's all they did was call and say they've been out since the and other piles to back up. Okay, so in other words, they can call and say they've been out, say a couple months, a month, or something like that. If it's been that long, then yeah. really that's not any good. I don't believe you would have passed it three or four times. Okay. And then also, I forgot to mention, um, I don't know if Jim had anything to do with it, but the when they did the paving on Torrance Avenue, they did pay that variable track. And I just want to say thank you for whoever had, had anything to do with that because they, they did pay that part we were talking about the second railroad track. So we have a smooth ride going north on the uh, Torrance Avenue. So thank you. There's enough enough correspondence going across, so <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, I just want to ask you a question. You know, this is a, like a, a formal to ask you or not. 
Well, how many workers do you have in public works? Um, ten. Ten workers. And what hours uh, do you all work? Seven to three thirty. Seven to three thirty. And I'm going to ask one other question. You know, you know this too. Um, when they were talking about the leakage that that we have in South Village, can you tell me what that leakage is at like right now? Uh, Percentage-wise, we don't have a number exactly. We had a heat survey done, and those leak uh, areas were given to us in a report, and we had to go through each one of those uh, leaks. And once we determined how bad the leak was, we turned it to report, and we'll get a number back of what those leaks can be compared to our current home reports. Okay, the last report, did you know what they were? Um, I think the last one was close to 40%. 40? It was probably, the numbers were probably up or down, they're probably up there. Mr. Barris? Kevin, Kevin, are we cutting any of the grasses all being done by the uh, summer hot now? No, we're not cutting any home ones. <laughs> we're not cutting any private property at all done by the uh, summer hot? No, we're not. Okay. Uh, the other one is that uh, uh, the uh, water main break that was, I was called and said they called in a water main break and it ran for several days, and I don't know how many days it ran, because I wasn't in town. But what's the procedure once the, what, the police, the resident contacts the, the police department, police department contacts <coughs> your person on call, and then you decide to make determination whether to call the crew out, is that how it goes, sir? Yeah, most breaks, um, there's leakers. We have probably one that's uh, waiting for a little more exposure at this point. That's small leaker, it's on October 21st, and, Chappelle. Um, that one's just a lot ready to dig, but currently many of the ones that come up usually are very obvious where they're at. They're going down pretty far with the water tower or the pump house, I should say, hit, where you'll see the, 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 the gravity drop. That is a definite indicator that has to be addressed immediately. Um, something that we can't even see any spike on, we watch it, we don't want to dig out the driveway further down the parkway. Sometimes it looks like they're coming up to the ground when they drive, they look like they're coming up in the wrong place. So we give a couple of days, we have that, and that's using an indicator of pop-up All right, thank you. All right. I'm D, Finance Director, Mr. Rowe. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, first of all, we just reported the cops during the final report, and then we got up to $9,300, and we got the reimbursement already as of July, uh, and in the amount of $9,300. The total grant was two hundred and thirty six thousand spread out three years. We have earned it completely. The second is the treasurer's report for the previous fiscal year for six months will be completed within a week and the fourth cook as well as the county. Third is May and June collector's report will be available pretty soon with me within a week. As of today, we have a balance in the general fund in Illinois funds, $265,143.60. And in first with this plan, we have $208,312.33. That depends on that. Thank you. Move to South Village Homeland Security Agency. Sorry, thank you. Call it back. Trustee uh, Birch. How are we able to pay your distribution that you have from here for accounts payable? Yeah. I'm looking at 473, and you got 478. We have 265,140 in LMI funds, and we have 208,000 in. And general fund expenditures are approximately about two hundred and fifty one thousand out of two hundred and fifty one thousand if you take waste management in the amount of thirty seven thousand six it will net will be approximately about 
And um, so we have more than enough to cover. What did you want? I'm, I'm sorry, I'm not, I'm okay. If you take 37 miles away from 265, that still gives you two. No. 251,539.54 minus $37,000 approximately. If you take 40,000, the net is 210,000. For example, we have more than enough to cover 210,000. Okay. The reason why I'm asking, I mean, because I, you know, I just want to make sure. We have a trustee purchase. We have enough money to cover. Okay, you said we have enough money to cover. So that's just, yeah, I'm just looking at what you just said. You'd be a few thousand short, but if you said we have enough money to cover, then now we have enough money. Okay. All right. Mr. Mayor. Trustee Mayor. Are we gradually paying back the uh, water fund up here, water fund? Oh, uh, we have already completed so that, that is completely paid back? Uh, completely paid back. Okay. Uh, also, I, I still need to get that report from the uh, adjudicators. Uh, I, I asked them once a month for the, uh, the accounts, the revenue, the receipts that we get every month from the adjudicators. Yeah, the police department has provided the They have the right to check. Not yet. Okay, thank you. All right. You want to talk about security agency, Mr. Jones? Hey, Mr. Mayor. Uh, a report from the July 22nd, uh, the last two weeks, has been responded to 21 calls. Uh, about one structure fire, one small fire, two rubbish fires, one wires down, one electrical problem, three car accidents, six fire alarms, one CO alarm, three traffic control, three uh, tailors, one missing person, and one assistant to other agency. And just so you aware, it's the siren uh, maintenance has been completed uh, last week, and this is uh, other than replacing the four batteries. Uh, one of the sirens had it, we had to replace a belt and some sensor lights uh, for uh, the uh, panelists that shows us who are on AC or DC. And uh, that includes my reports. All right, thank you, sir. Over to Human Relations Commission Beautification Committee, Mr. Campbell Pruitt. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Welcome back. Thank you. I was part of the Human Relations Commission before. And I uh, want to say thank you to all the residents who came out to do this in the park. <laughs> and I uh, truly appreciate your being there. We also thank all of those who assisted along with our connects. And I would really like to uh, commend President Baird Stewart, who jumped in and just helped out tremendously. And uh, we'd also like to report to you that our next will be in the park, in case you were not able to be there, mark your calendar, because it will be August the 16th. And we're hoping to actually be outside this time. Um, we said that the rain was not going to scare us off, the rain did scare us off, and we went inside the community center. But we're really hoping that this time we will be able to be outside. But then we will be going back inside in September and in October, simply because Parks and Rex has made a request to that committee that we continue to have monthly movies in the evening. So we thought we could do it on the third Friday of every month, except for now, for Thanksgiving and for Christmas. So we'll go between now, October, and then we'll resume again in January. How many residents actually come out and enjoy that with us? We also want to report and want you to keep in mind September 28th, uh, the Human Relations Commission will be hosting, along with Lambda 12 Omega Chapter of Alpha Cap Alpha Sorority, a major health and resource fair. Currently, we have at least 30 uh, health care providers and vendors who have already. Um, committed to being here with us and it's going to be a major, major event and it's going to be for all of South Village residents, but then we will be inviting residents from all of South Bland, um, the South Bank communities as well. Uh, where the movies are concerned, I do want to thank the Homeland Security 
for having this back there and we regret that we did not provide notification that we were moving inside opposed to outside and we regret any inconvenience <coughs> that would have um, caused us that. And that concludes that. No, one more. Uh, about two or three months ago, prior to the budget hearings, um, this committee approached Robinson engineers as well as Overson and Sturps and asked them to um, help to sponsor our neighborhood directory that the Human Relations Commission is planning, and they asked that we write a letter. However, then when the board engaged in budget hearings, you guys had uh, obligated $3,000 for us, so there was no need to go to them and ask them. However, from my understanding, that $3,000 is no longer on the table. So I would like you to know, and if it is okay, we would like to proceed with drafting the letter to both of those organizations, asking them to assist and to sponsor our village-wide um, director. And that concludes that report. And you, know, you can share that with me in terms of your final disposition at a later date. Okay. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with asking. So, I mean, if there's well something to benefit the village, you can ask. If they want to give you, come back and let the board know. Fantastic. Thank you. That concludes that report. Moving on to the beautification report, and I think I'm taking up a lot of time. So, I'm just going to start talking just a little bit faster, if you don't mind. Mm -hmm. And uh, <laughs> I would like to first start with this report by thanking the fire department because they have run off board of order that they have to um, dispose of when they are maintaining their uh, vehicles. And lately, they have been watering some of the flowers for us. And we greatly, greatly appreciate that resource, and especially when it's been in the 90s as it's been, because no amount of watering is too much for that. So we greatly appreciate the fire department for that. Where the Hootsies are concerned, our homes have already been judged, and as soon as the actual boards come into town, they will be placed in the bonds, and um, we have quite a few to do, but I don't think we're gonna have the 100 that we had hoped to. Um, but hopefully, when so many people see the Hoopsies this year, it's going to encourage our residents you know, to aspire to have one in their bond next year, but it just wasn't here this year. In terms of title max, I communicated with them, and um, they should be working on their properties in terms of landscaping it, I was hoping this week. They had to reach out to their uh, corporate office for their landscapers to develop the design, and they stated that it, would, it was supposed to be here within two weeks, and so by the end of this week would be the conclusion of that two weeks, so I'm hoping that that will take place. In terms of the summer work program that Marsha Rex is working with, our beautification committee has signed on to work with five youngsters. So in any of the department heads or of your buildings, if you see some young people out there working, nine out of 10 times I will be with them, but know that all of you guys are targeted and we have seven weeks with the young people. I'm working with them for three days each week, four hours a day. And so we are really going to be pulling weeds and cleaning up trash and everything. So we'll be quite visible. Our beautification committee responded to a four-year request um, for the minutes and the financials from January 12th to the present. So that has been submitted. I'm certain of that. They're going to ask for additional information because we did not have enough time to uh, get all the information together as requested. And the last thing that I want to report to you is that we will be resuming concession sales at our next meeting. Um, we communicated uh, with public uh, relations, and from what we were told, the amount of money that they're making or netting as a result of the vending machines is very negligible. And it's really not enough to split or share 50, 50, 40, 60, or any way. So I'm going to ask that all of you that sit around here, to the bottom of the order, 
and snacks and everything, stop bringing them and come back to my um, concession sale. And that concludes my report. Thank you. All right, thank you very much. I have a question. For green grass, is that a requirement? Not this year. Okay. <laughs> green grass is not. We love brown. Brown is a nice color, too. Okay, so. just want to know because it looks like that's what it is out there. Right. All right. How's the commission, Mr. Holcomb? I'm sorry. Mr. Holcomb. Uh, all of our mounts is Thursday at 7 p.m. Yeah. We have the uh, housing meeting here, and I invite everybody to show up. So we can tell you what's going on. Right now, we don't have a lot to report because uh, half the county is on vacation. That concludes my report. Thank you, sir. Who is the senior committee, Ms. Lynchson? Thank you, Ms. Mary. Some village uh, senior summer programs, things have been worked out and our attendance is still very low. Flyers have been distributed to several churches and businesses. The Senior Center will be open Monday through Friday from 8.30 a.m. to 3 p.m. Admission is free to uh, South Village seniors 50 and up. Non-resident seniors will be charged $1 per visit. Our paperback book exchange is also available without ch uh, charge. Uh, we have, in addition to the activities listed, a flyer we have in the back, basic line dance class would be, be provided per man. So that's anyone with two left feet, they can easily learn. Um, there are also openings available for new members in the three senior organization. And the um, South Village Bluegrass is returning this coming Sunday. And the other groups, uh, I believe the uh, Wednesday uh, ceramics class is on vacation this, um, this month. And they um, had asked that they come and join the summer program on Fridays. The senior committee's free Zumba class will not meet on Saturday, August 3rd. The next Zumba Go class is August 17th from 1 to 1.45 and every first and third Saturday. The next free monthly blood pressure screening co-sponsored plan will be provided on August 5th and every first Monday from one to one, four, uh, from one to two. The next monthly movie is on Monday, August 12th at 12.30. There is going to be a lunch provided uh, at 11 a.m. co-sponsored with McConaughey Library. You do need to make reservations for that by calling the library, 708-757-4771. I did put out a few flyers on the um, updated movie schedule for 2013. I do have tickets available for Boone Township Annual Picnic held on Thursday, August 1st, $3 in advance. They are $4 at the picnic round and there are flyers in the back. The Senior Committee's next meeting is on Thursday, August 8th at 5 p.m. in the Senior Center and every second Thursday at 5 p.m. Thank you, this ends my report. You know, Rose, I don't know if you received the information also uh, that Senior Picnic on August 1st, there's gonna be a lot of elected officials there, so you might want the seniors know. Uh, I just received uh, communication that Cook County Board President's going to be there, Cook County uh, Clerk, the see State Representatives, Marcus Evans, Anthony DeLuca, uh, and there's supposed to be some more that haven't responded yet, so there's gonna be a lot of elected officials at that senior um, lunch on August 1st. I noticed in the budget that the village uh, donated to, on the budget there's something in the I wasn't sure, or is that next year? I, I have to look, I don't remember right now. So. I get that answer. I don't, I, don't, I don't think so, but we'll just verify. All right. Move to item number six, consent agenda. Is there any questions, comments, or anything you want to do? Hearing you know, I'd like to ask for a motion to approve the consent agenda as is. So moved. Have a motion or a second? Okay. Motion a second. <coughs> George Kirk, please call roll. Burgess? Yes. Morton? Yes. Myers? Yes. Hoskin? Yes. Washington? Yes. Williams? Yes. 
First carries through item number seven, new business. Uh, motion to approve the accounts payable and purchase for July 10th, 2013 through July 23rd, 2013. Is your motion to approve? So moved. Second. Motion and second. Any questions or comments? Question. Trustee Briggs. Page one. Um, professional services. Um, is it possible? Because I know that they're doing everything, so it's possible to get an itemized bill so we can kind of know this covers all of these things that the county is doing. Because I'm sure this doesn't reflect just for the village. I'm sure this is something of the other entity that he's involved in or the American group is involved in. So I'm sure this is just our particular figure, not just for representation of just the village. I'm sure it could be for other things. So it could at a later date, right now, it's on there, but at a later date, can, we get, can I get an itemized bill so we know what billable hours they are, what they do? Okay. Um, page two. I uh, want the police department. Can you explain that expenditure? I mean, I, I, I know what it says. Did we get new phones? Or did they get upgrades or new phones? Uh, I don't think so. It says the same old phone. Our church had a question on that one. Um, further discussion with Kevin, did we oversee all the phones? The police department didn't receive new air cards for retrieving their, uh, keeping the uh, equipment, their, uh, their information on the computers. They're they called air cards. And they had to replace them. And so the number of their expenses. Plus, plus the cost of their phones, and that's where we do that, that amount. Are these for all offices? Are these for all the offices? No, the, there's only several police officers and the chief that have phones. But the air card is for your computer systems to store their, their uh, data, okay? And they had, to, they had to replace them because they were worn out for so old, so that's, that's what we do that for the from. Oh, okay. In other words, you have a bill for that. Yes, we do. Yes, um, also, page three and page four. Is this a redundant or is this a redundant expense or is this the same? Because it says both of them have the same heading. And uh, one of them says dispatch, and one says emergency, and they're both the same figure. Yeah, thank you. So they are the exact same figure for each one. That's right. So it says, I do have a question. When are the trustees getting these accounts payable? Pardon? When are the trustees getting these accounts payable? When were, when did the trustees have these in their box? I think it was on uh, Thursday. All right. Thursday evening. Thursday evening? Mm -hmm. Okay, I want to know for sure when they're, when they're receiving these accounts payable because I encourage these trustees, questions like these, we can get answered prior to the meeting rather than removing something if there's a question Let's get, this, let's get these issues resolved before we get to a board meeting. Um, and if there's any way you cannot get these to the trustees before Thursdays, I want to know, and I want to know why. All right? Because that means the trustees have had this thing in their box since Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, and we're sitting here on Tuesday night discussing these issues. So um, I want to know for sure when the trustees are receiving these from now on. All right? Thank you very much. All right. Any other questions or comments? Hearing now we have a motion and a second. Which question please call roll. Burgess? Yes. Morton? Yes. Myers? Yes. Hoskin? Yes. Washington? Yes. Williams? Yes. Motion carries. I have number eight miscellaneous comments from the mayor and board of trustees. Start with trustee. Hang on. The board of trustees. The post-it mentioned that the board of trustees got about a year ago. And since then, they started working. So I'm ready to replace the post-it mention which cost $439 to $179 per month for a week. We have to make some arrangement that we can buy tomorrow. Otherwise, it's, it's both made and not get uh, paid enough. How much are we talking? That's about $139 per month. Okay, I, I would ask for the village board to get a consensus to get a, a consensus so we can keep the mail going here in South Village. 
but this is something that needs to come back before this village board next Tuesday night. I also want the breathalyzer um, equipment that the police department is asking to be replaced brought before this village board next Tuesday also. All right, I think I sent, the, I sent you that information um, with the request. Yes, our, our machine is on its last leg. So uh, there's two things that have to be pushed on the agenda, but I'm looking for a consensus so we can keep the mail going in soft road. Is it okay? And I'm not looking to sign a lease. See if they can give us something that we can do. Got a lot of to get something more. Find out what we can get, get it out to the Board of Trustees, but can we have consensus so Mr. Raul can move forward so we can continue to get the mail going out? Is there anyone who has a problem? I make a motion that say how much? Well, I'm not looking for a motion that's not on the agenda. I'm just looking for consensus so we can keep things going. We'll talk about it next Tuesday night. Bring before us what it's going to cost, and we'll do an official motion. So it's going to be three Tuesdays. Yes, it'll be actually just the 15th. Well, we have to be. We have to be continue keeping keeping mail. Okay, so then why don't we make a motion to suspend the rules and put this into a vote that you can, you know, go up to five hundred dollars so we can get the leeway just in case. I'd rather not because there's a discussion on this on this matter. The discussion will happen next Tuesday night, but we do need to continue keeping mail going on. Okay, baby. You said you want to consent. You want to consent. What's the difference? I mean, we're here now. Why can't we just? We're not signing any leases? No, 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 I'm just saying, why can't we just vote out uh, you know, no more than $500 expense? We have to go ahead and do that rather than have a consensus in the uh, Well, is he, so this is just the amounts that he's spending on the postage. This is a, the, 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 the machine is down. He's looking to get a machine that we can use until we can come in for the work. I mean, you don't really need a vote if it's like an emergency expenditure. Right. Um, you can take a consensus. Like we do with the water. You know, that will give us some direction. Well, consensus gives a direction to move forward. We'll do the official voting in two weeks from now, after we have discussion next, next two dinner. Mr. Mayor, I'm sorry to interrupt, but we don't have a meeting until August 13th. Next Tuesday is the fifth Tuesday, and then the following Tuesday is National Night Out. So just so you're aware, the next time we meet will be a board meeting, unless we have a special meeting called in between. So I'm just making you aware of that, just so you figure that in your conversation. So wait a second, then it would be the fifth meeting, because we have to talk about it, discuss it. All I'm doing is just making a motion that we empower the finance director to spend no more than $500 on this emergency or whatever he has to get, and that's it. I mean, it's, we're not voting anything out, but like just said, but if we can do a consensus, that's the same thing as the vote will be signed by the I think I'm more question one kind of gave their opinion as whether the mayor should be able to give direction on what to do. If we tell them to go ahead and fix that, get that done, that's an expense. It's going to cost X amount of money. Which would not be approved to the accounts payable. But he has the, he's not going to give it, but we can't, we can't say no, we can take it back. Right. So, I mean, so all I was going to do is just so we can have a buffer, have, you know, spend up to $500. Or, or empower him to spend up the five hundred dollars at discretion to get his um, get the um, machine fixed. That's it. I mean, it's not that we're signing the contract. It's just that the machine cannot be fixed. It's, okay, well, this is what you Okay, <laughs> I mean, just I'm just saying, with five hundred dollars, take care of what you need to take care of until mm -hmm. such time. That's all I was trying to do. Let me fight. Why couldn't we just you know, allocate funds for postage and just do the old fashioned lick? And well, we already, part of the budget allocates funds for postage, correct? Yeah. It's a so we're it's, already, it's already a budget item. So that you can continue purchasing stamps until we can bring back from the village board. So we're, we're, we're safe anyway. All right. Mm -hmm. So two things on next week, or on the next committee meeting agenda. All right. Now, we got the trustee. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. 
I just wanted to say thank you to um, all of the residents and our well wishes for the trip to DC. Um, I just wanted to let you guys know, for those who've asked, and many of you have um, asked about the trip, it was great. Um, speaking with other communities and areas all over the country was truly an eye-opening experience. Learning the other suburbs of, city, of states like, um, cities like Philadelphia, Cincinnati, and Newark, and countless other towns have similar issues with their infrastructure, housing, education, and transport was really a sight to see. Through group efforts, we discussed ways to attack problems and provide information to our residents. We had the opportunity to speak with senior members of the EPA, HUD, CMAP, and other important organizations regarding municipal matters. The contacts that I made were invaluable, and the fact that many states, such as Pennsylvania, Ohio, and New Jersey, have formed a building one fill in the blank, has really inspired me to inquire why we don't have a building one Illinois. And I just wanted to let everybody know that that's just what I wrote down. But I really wanted to say how it was amazing it was to see so many people who had so many similar problems, who all kind of felt like they were, power was a big thing at the, um, at the summit. Knowing your power, how to find ways to find power individually and as a community, and working together with smaller suburbs of larger states. Anybody who's been in any of our meetings, we've talked about being you know, at the southern tip of Cook County. Cook County's pretty big. A large part of that is Chicago. So when county has money, a large part of it goes to Chicago and it leaves the south suburbs with very little to divide among themselves. And they talk about the fact how working with each other as a community, as individuals, how working with somebody is always the better option because there's, there's strength in numbers. So his, listening to that, there were, um, like I said, after going to this summit two years ago, people developed Building One Ohio, Building One Pennsylvania, Building One New Jersey, there was even, um, in New Jersey, they took it a step further and they put together South Jersey and that was just the southern part of New Jersey. They came together. And just learning how they did that, learning the steps that they took, learning the things that, the problems that plagued them were, was really just an eye-opening experience and um, I, was, I was really happy to be there. I was really happy to get all the information that um, I did and I hope to very soon be able to compile it and provide it in a more of a committee meeting setting. Um, I just want to give an overview tonight and um, again, thank Building One America for everything that they did because it really was a very great experience. Lots of time, lots of conversation, <laughs> lots of notes, but um, it, was, it was definitely a very educational experience and that um, I was provided notification that Video will be made available online by Friday to get glimpses of um, the summit. And that's all that I have. Trustee Myers? I have one question for you. Uh, what time limit do you, are, do you have on the outside basketball court? I don't know that we actually have one established, but the community center is supposed to close at 11, so I'll go with 11 at the very latest, but there's no lights out there. So. I, I think Dusty Dusty Maybe we can get a sign post that because I've been a couple of times last week before I left that I came by here in the late night hours and they're still playing basketball out there. I don't know how I can see to that, but it's a safety factor that we should really consider. All That's right. all I have, thank you, sir. I'll work on getting a sign for that. I uh, just want to let everybody know uh, the last meeting I uh, mentioned about uh, uh, Market Sevens was having an event in Lansing. Uh, I did attend that. Uh, he did speak about a lot of things. Um, he wants to come here and kind of do the same type of setting here as a meet and greet, meet all the residents of Sauk Village. So, uh, you know, look forward to him doing that. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, we're having a meeting. Um, I had it scheduled for the July 26th for the July celebration planning for next year. I've had to cancel that. We're going to move that to August 2nd, Friday, August 2nd, 7 p.m. here. Um, as Marva mentioned earlier, SSMDC has hired 26 young people from ages 16 to 24 to do work or whatever is needed around the area. 
Uh, we are trying to find places for them, so if committees or people need to use those, those young people, they are available. <coughs> just contact us over to uh, community center. They're there in the morning, starting at 10 o'clock. Uh, if you have any questions, please see me afterwards. Excuse me, how many workers do you have? There are 26. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Trustee Washington. Thank you, ma'am. So you say committees or conditions that uh, utilize the young people can let you know? Yes. Yeah. We, have, we have them available. You, um, you don't have transportation for, for most of them, so you have to provide the transportation. If you're going to take them very far, which we'll be responsible for overseeing them. So uh, Mr. Jackson, Gary Jackson, is in charge of the program. He's from the state of Illinois. Uh, this is not costing the village a dime. These are all paid for by the state. Uh, this was actually supposed to start July 8th, but the state didn't get the funding until Monday, so we started it Monday. So this is a seven-week program. I don't think I said that. It's a seven-week program. It will end the first week in September, so those young people are available. Okay, I just want to clear you on that, because I did notice that a lot of them were standing around outside today, and you were trying to find places to push them to get them to do, you know, different various duties. I'm sure I'll be able to utilize some of them so they can put watch the program. But I just want to also say that the businesses have really been instrumental in displaying our uh, decal for our neighborhood watch. I'm very proud that uh, McDonald's as well as the nail shop and um, I've taken them to various businesses as you begin to shop around the village and continue shopping in the village. You'll notice you'll see different businesses have them right on their door as well as someplace in their business. And when we drive down the blocks, we can begin to see the different homes that have them displayed. We really want to send a very, very strong message to let people know that Salt Village is getting on one accord with watching each other's homes, <laughs> watching our neighbors' homes in front, behind, on both sides of us. So if you don't have your uh, decal displayed on your garage, your back door, front door, we're just hoping that everyone will come on board and at least display it someplace around your house and on your neighborhood. And that concludes my report. Thank you. Thank you, Trustee Bridge. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I just want to reiterate uh, our next meeting uh, for the Intergovernmental Relations Committee will be the first Thursday in August here at 7 o'clock. Thank you. Thank you, Trustee. Uh, just a couple things. First of all, I'd like to thank uh, Sherry, who's on vacation right now, but uh, thank her for working with businesses on uh, getting the signs down on the Corner 394 and South Trail. I'd like to thank the businesses for uh, removing those signs. Uh, it's a big uh, Kind of helps as we all talk about bringing back pride and progress. Uh, so I appreciate all the work that was done, uh, communicating to the businesses and for the businesses uh, working with the village to have those removed. Uh, with that said, I'm working also on trying to get some blue signage along 394, like you'd see going down Expressway for lodging, gas, mm -hmm. uh, and and food. So we're trying to work with uh, IDOT and see if we get some more blue signs um, so that the businesses will have some type of, um, um, I guess, so people will know, turn on Sock Trail, because you'll, you'll see the Subways and the Popeyes and the McDonald's when it comes to food, and also pointing them off uh, to get gas, so we have no lodging. So at least we're trying to get two of the blue signs. Uh, the other thing, too, is I apologize earlier for arriving late. Uh, uh, maybe some new, uh, Probably a lot did not know I was off on a business trip, and uh, I know that some people were asking, why do I not tell certain individuals well, when I'm leaving? Uh, it, it's, it's for the safety of my family, I would be very honest. Uh, I still keep up with the day-to-day -day while I'm traveling uh, through phone calls. I know that uh, Mr. Johnson called me on my cell phone while I was in Beijing, China. He probably had, he had no idea where I was. Um, but I still keep up through the emails, I still keep up through the phones. Um, but there's a reason for that. It's because there is ignorant people out there um, who want to put things online. We talked about Facebook earlier. Um, and nothing worse, and we hear about it all the time, about how people's houses get robbed, get broken into, because they, they go out on Facebook and tell the world that they're going out to eat and they're leaving town, or they're going on vacation. Mm -hmm. Well, there's nothing worse than for my wife and children to be sitting at home and letting the world know that I am out of the country. So when, when, when individuals who are ignorant go out and put that information out there for the world to see, they put my family in danger. Yes, they do. Mm -hmm. So um, I let only certain people know, 
that I'm out of town, and those people that I let know, I know they're not going to tell the world that I'm out of town. There's individuals on this board, there's other individuals throughout the community, I will not let them know when I'm leaving past this town because of the safety of my family, because I know those individuals will go directly to the ignorant people. So um, I'm glad to be back. Uh, it, it makes me, when I travel abroad, um, this last trip I had to go to South Korea, uh, went from South Korea to Beijing, China, went to Hangzhou, China, back to Shanghai, and I've been up for over 25 hours now because um, Tuesday morning at 6 o'clock I was up taking the train to Shanghai and catching a flight which was delayed. My flight was 14 hours and there's a 13 hour difference. So I've been up for quite a few hours. But what I was able to do is I came directly from the airport, stopped by the house real quick, changed clothes, and I came directly to the war meeting tonight. So um, I'm glad to be home. Um, there's nothing more when you travel abroad. I tell everyone there's two things I dislike the most when I travel to Asia. It is the food and it's the flight. Uh, <laughs> my flight to, to South Korea was over 18 hours. Um, nice. My flight home was uh, a little over 14, not including the delays and stuff that we had. So, um, But when I ran, everyone knew that there would be one or two times a year that I had to take business trips. And this is one of those times I had to take a business trip. Um, but I assured everyone, in fact, I had some people that once it, it got out that I was out of the country asking what I was doing. Um, I was keeping up the day to day um, through phone calls. My cell phone was available. I was checking voicemails um, and emails every single day and answering uh, emails. I know Trustee Myers called me while I was in South Korea. So um, I didn't call him back on my cell phone. I shot him uh, an email. but. Um, there, there's just things that we have to do, and we all have business uh, that we have to work for. Some of us have to work doubles and triples, and some of us have to travel. So, um, I appreciate all the ones that uh, took care of my family while I was gone, uh, especially after word got out. Uh, I had a little bit more, I guess you call it protection around the family um, because of, of the getting out. Mm -hmm. But uh, I think anyone is sitting here who is a mother or a father who is a husband or a wife real, can realize and understand why I do not tell people when I'm traveling. Um, and if you have any children, I, I don't think anyone can hold it against me um, for that. So uh, I just want to make sure I made that very clear. Um, and I can only thank God that after word did get out that nothing did happen to my family. So uh, with that said, I'd like for a motion to adjourn. Oh. Yes. Second? Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Meeting adjourned. Thank you. 8.33 p.m. Cool. Okay. Dinner here at home. Dinner. Yep.